Hi, I'm John Fratelli and this is UBR TV. I used to go and play in bands and play on stage before I could really play. Uh, I'm sure some people somewhere have got recordings of it. I knew three chords and applied them to 20 songs, even though they were all wrong. Mm. The Psycho Jukebox is um, the name of the record. Uh, and I hope it's colourful. I don't see, I don't know why I have the need to describe music in colours, but it seems that that's the best way. It's how, I, it's how I hear it and how I see it, I guess. There was one song on the record called Magic and Mayhem that really did take me a long time. And now that I listen to it, it's not that it's complex, it's just needed to, to breathe, I guess, and needed pushed into shape a little bit. The Barlands is definitely still and always has been my favourite venue to play in and to watch gigs in. The first person I ever saw in that venue was Bob Dylan, which I think is just is completely fitting. And it's not the kind of venue you would normally play. And I, I've got a bootleg of it at home, which I listen to a lot. And um, it's so when we got to play there, it was it was it was slightly magical and quite special. And if I get back there, I'll be I'll be really happy. You know, I get the feeling if they ever really tried to knock it down. An entire population of Glaswegians would ring the place, and uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't get within a mile of it. It's definitely hard to get a break in the industry. I can see the attraction, uh, you know, and being in a band. Or I never wanted to be in a band. I just wanted to play music. It was never the band thing I was interested in. But I still believe that the, the, the people who are good enough, they get there somehow in the end. And I don't believe there's um, undiscovered geniuses in the bedrooms. Oh, they're undiscovered until somebody discovers. I think they always get found. I think they, they always find a way. The Fratelli's got a record deal and we weren't even looking for one. And we'd played six or seven gigs. We were just, it was just a good, at the right time for somebody. We weren't giving CDs out or anything. It, it, it came from a friend of a friend who happened to pass something on to somebody. I think it, it's definitely useful to, to be told, even not even forget starting out. You could be 20 years down the line and you still need people to tell you when you've gone too far or you haven't gone far enough. Sometimes it's, it's necessary for somebody to tell you. You m might have written the wrong type of song you might want to try and write something different. You might want to change this, change that. Um, I used to be terrible at that, at accepting that, but sometimes they're right and, and sometimes you're too close to what you do. I can't, I can't remember who specifically said this, but he told me to um, view your career as a long-term thing, as a 25-year um, project that will be judged at the end of that rather than rather than that it will be judged one step at a time, one album at a time or one record at a time. I like that, regardless of the trend for for pop music to to be something that's short and sharp and over quickly. I like the idea that well actually doesn't have to be. There is people that completely blow you away and baffle you at the same time by the amount of travel and inconvenience they'll put themselves through to come and see you. You'll be in some country that's not here and they'll be there too, even though you know they're from here. But I tell you what, I remember when nobody wanted to come and see, see me play. So uh, I'm actually quite grateful for it. And you've never, you haven't arrived until you've got some strange ones, right? Uh, the three albums I've listened to the most uh, are definitely uh, Blonde on Blonde, Dark Side of the Moon and Abbey Road.